In this video, we're going to talk about the very important concept called reasons to bet. So whenever we're betting in poker, we need to consider these reasons and a lot of players really don't fully take them into account before they bet and they get themselves into sticky situations. So we're going to spend a few minutes and we're going to talk about these in detail. So whenever you bet, we need a valid reason. So whenever I'm placing a bet in a poker game, I need to have a really valid reason as for why I'm doing it. So for example, if I'm value betting, I better be able to justify while I'm value betting. If I'm bluffing or semi-bluffing, I also need to justify those as well. So always ask yourself when you're betting, why are you betting and does it make sense? Because if it doesn't make sense and it's probably not going to work, then you probably shouldn't do it. And in poker, there's really only three main reasons to bet and there's actually only two. And the third one is actually a subset of them. So the Two main reasons really that most poker players are going to be betting in a hand is one for value when they have a strong hand where they think they have the best hand, definitely betting out for value because we think we can get called by worse. Or the second one is just purely bluffing, thinking we can get a better hand to fold for some reason or another. And then the last one, which is a subset of bluffing, is the concept of getting your villain to fold their equity share. And this will make more sense when we talk about it in the next slide. So let's go ahead and talk about these and we'll talk about them in a little bit more detail. So let's talk about betting for value. When you're betting for value, you need to ask yourself, can I get called by a worst hand? When you have the best hand, you should not always be betting for value. So for example, if you flop a straight flush, should you bet that flop? Probably not because your opponent may not be able to call you and you just have the board crushed, it's probably better to check the flop and try to induce a bluff on the turn or hope for that they catch up on the turn. Another example is say if you have pocket kings and the board comes king deuce nine rainbow board, three different suits. So you flop top set. Should you go ahead and throw out a value bet as a continuation on the flop? Probably not because the board is very dry and again, it's hard for your opponent to really call you. But then, for example, let's switch it up. What if you flop the net straight, but there's two hearts on the board for the flush draw? And it's like your opponent could have one of those cards, two of the cards on the board, four pair, two pair, or they could have a pair with a straight draw or a pair with a flush draw, should you bet? Most definitely, because it's easy for you to get called by worse. So when we have a really strong hand, we need to consider what our opponents can have based upon the board texture and based upon their most likely holdings. So that's what you need to ask yourself when you're betting for value. And one of the mistakes that a lot of players make at the micro stakes is that they don't really consider this and they're not value betting when they should. And on the flip side, when they have the board crushed and it's hard for their opponents to really have anything, they're value betting too much. And when we play at the micro stakes, a lot of our money comes from betting for value. I mean, that's probably about, I would say for me, there's probably around 85 to 90% of my profits come from betting for value because I am feeding on the prey, which are the bad players. And that's where my money is coming from. I don't need to bluff that often. Really, I just sit back. I wait for the good hands. And when I get them, I go for maximum value when I know I can get value. So now that we've talked about going for value, let's talk about the concept of bluffing. And that's our second ball down here, getting better hands to fold. So in certain, certain situations, you can represent hands, or I should say you can represent a range of hands pre-flop, and then on the flop, you can represent certain hands based upon the flop board texture where you can successfully bluff and be successful a large percentage of the time. And a lot of it's based upon board texture as well as position and your opponents. So remember we talked about the different type of opponents um, and one person we're never going to try to bluff is the calling station, but then we have players like the Knits and the loose passive fit or fold opponents. Those are the type of opponents that we can bluff all day long and be happy about it. So you need to ask yourself when you're about to throw out a bluff, whether it's just a straight up bluff and you have nothing but like maybe jack high or you're semi bluffing with a straight draw or flush draw or some sort of a combo draw that you need to ask how likely is that your bluff is going to work and you need to look at things like your opponent's tendencies and their style of play you know 
you need to ask how likely are they going to fold. You need to look at the board texture and the action leading up to that point in hand, whether it's the flop, the turn, the river. You need to determine, can I represent a bluff? And if I do represent a bluff, can I most likely get my opponent to fold? So really think about it rather than just throwing out a bluff saying, I'm going to put out a pot size bluff or I'm just going to jam all in and I hope he folds. Um, you're not really thinking about why you're bluffing and if it's likely to work or not. So really think about all those different concepts and all those different reasons in regards to how likely it is that you're going to get your opponent to fold before you throw out a bluff. So that's the concept of bluffing, getting better hands to fold. Now the third one is a subset of getting better hands to fold. It is getting villains to fold their equity share. So you may have the best hand. Well, you may not have the best hand, but you could very likely have the best hand. This is a, a, a concept where, for example, your opponent has ace king and you have pocket four and the flop comes deuce five, eight. If you get ace king to fold on the flop, that's really good for you right then and there because ace king has a lot of equity to catch up on the turn in the river. So in that concept right there, we are getting our villain to fold their equity share. That can suck out on us on later rounds. Another good example would be you have, let's say, pocket sixes and the board is three, four, five. Now your opponent could have an ace-x type of a hand. It could be ace-jack, it could be ace-ten, it could be ace-queen, where if they hit a deuce, or an ace on the turn, or on the river, that could be really bad for you if you think about it because you don't know if your opponent hit the straight or if they hit a pair of aces, both which can suck out on you. So your goal when you're in these types of situations, you should be able to ask yourself, if I throw out a semi-bluff or if I throw out a very thin value bet with the best hand, for example, if they throw out a C-bet and you raise, how likely do you think they're going to fold? And how successful do you think that you'll be in the long run trying to get them to fold their equity share? So that's really just the third concept right there. So let's recap quickly. First concept is betting for value. You need to ask yourself before you bet for value, can you get called by a worse hand? And that should dictate how much you value bet and how often you value bet. The second one is the bluffing. Can I get better hands to fold? So how likely is your bluff going to work? need to consider that before you throw out a bluff. And then the last one is, can you get your villain to fold their equity share? Is your villain going to fold ace-king if you raise them on a flop or it's a 3-4-9? Whether you have a pair of sevens or a pair of sixes or you just have jack-10, are you going to get them to fold their equity share where they can suck out on the turn of the river? And how likely is that going to happen? So those are the questions you need to ask yourself. And remember, when you're asking yourself these questions, think about the player's tendencies. So we talked about the player's types. So try to categorize them into a player type and determine how that's going to dictate, you know, the flow of the hand and how likely they are to call if you're value betting and they're going to fold if you're bluffing. And then also the board texture and the action up to that point. So take all that in consideration. And, you know, that's really all there is to it. And a lot of players just overlook these concepts. So that's going to go ahead and conclude this short lecture on reasons to bet. Let me know if you have any questions as usual. If you do, let me know. I'll be happy to answer. Post them on the discussion boards or send me a message on Udemy, and I'll be happy to answer. If not, thanks for watching, and this we'll see you This video is a lunch. part of our Crush Microstakes online poker course, The Complete Master Guide. If you like this course, go ahead and click this link here where you can get this course for 50% off via our special YouTube video using our coupon code YouTube, and you'll get enrolled in this course for only $6. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you over at Microgrinder Poker School.